Hey everybody, this is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I am behind the camera. I wasn't feeling too great to, to video. I wanted to show you though, uh, my husband is modeling the latest project that we were laboring over for weeks and weeks. And it's the tote bag that Ian chose the fabric for. Would you like to say hello and show my tote bag, Ian? I'm a model, am I? You are a model. Most models start their shoots at the beginning of the day. I know. <laughs> and here I am at the end of the day, having <laughs> driven to New Jersey yeah. twice. Yeah. And although uh, I'm a little tired, I am not totally spent because I have on my shoulder a tote bag <laughs> which is totally superb. Oh, you're so funny. Yes, it's true. Yeah, this is our finished tote bag. What a wonderful choice of fabrics. I wonder who Can chose Can you believe that? that? <laughs> you it's, wanna... it's, uh, it's certainly of uh, this world, not out of this world. And the, uh, the fabric inside is just delight. an ocean of delight. Is, Look at it. <laughs> it. With the, with the um, map of the world that Ian chose. Yes. And what's that inside? I can... I can't imagine what goes into a tote bag. Totes. On the way to the beach. Yeah. What do you have in a tote bag? You have towels in the tote. This is totally just acceptable. This is just to show how how capacious this bag is. I was showing you with the um, prototype that I made. But Ian, I have a surprise for you. Just you let, give give me the tote bag. And on the back of this door, on the back of the door right here on the doorknob. I'm unaccustomed to surprises. There's something. Oh. 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 You, st you made my original <laughs> tote. And isn't it absolutely superb? <laughs> Not just handsome, it is... Now, Ian chose just this fabric. Stunning, a visual treat. Do you love it? Because that was your it's first... It's absolutely gorgeous. Aww. It truly is truly is now this splendid if you're just joining in for this uh the look at it the end half of this tutorial um this was the original <clears throat> excuse me this was the original fabric that my husband had chosen when i asked him to choose some fabric and after after your consideration you said oh perhaps it's perhaps it's a bit too light yeah maybe not so serviceable because a tote goes everywhere under all sorts of uh uh, visiting circumstances, maybe to the beach or other places where it's going to get dirty. So it's very but light in colour. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's just so gorgeous. So I made that for you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, can I take it with me? You can take that. Can with I go you. to work? With <laughs> you? Can I have it over my shoulder. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, folks, that's a lovely, lovely surprise. And oh, and that—well, that, one, well, that was the original. one. That was the original. If you want to show that one, the that was original. This was the original tote that I had done a prototype. I've made it quite a few of these, and boy, are they handy. I tell you, once this you looks, make them, Victorian to me, like yeah, eighteen ninety-eight or something. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, and after you've made them, after you've made these, they literally take about 45 minutes to do, maybe an hour. Um, and I've made a big, as I say, a big, huge song and dance about these totes. But they really are pr lovely and practical. And um, whatever fabric you make it out of. delight. Yeah, he Don't likes that. Think? Yeah, I love this one. Which one do you like the best? Uh, because you chose both fabrics. <laughs> I like these two the best. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this one's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Ian. Pleasure. Love, love from the true loves. Love from the true loves. Bye bye. Bye bye. Not with that. I'll just come back here and make this seam just a little bit, lo little bit wider. 
because what we're going to be doing is we're going to, I can put it on faster. We're going to be stitching down one side and up the other, like I was saying. I put it on a bit faster now. But about a little more than a quarter of an inch. I see, I can never go that fast. No, it's only because I've been sewing now how for how long, Maxwell? See? 55 years? But see, when I use you think your machine's broken, but when you No, use no, it, no, it's only, it's something is wrong if, if, when it starts out very slow. That clunking so sound did happen to me also. Seriously. I have to get my machine serviced. Uh, I wonder, I wonder how, how, how many stitches it has on that thing. I don't know. This one isn't a computerized one, so it doesn't, so it doesn't tell me. I you did an excellent job. Thank you so much. Me, I, I wonder if your brother back downstairs will, will them still work if you got that service. Well, apparently that machine, the, the motherboard or something is gone, and that makes it extremely expensive to to get prepared. So after 30 million stitches. Who does 30 million? <laughs> I do 30 million no, stitches. Is it, 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 it Like when you hit 10 million? Like, no, that's just a regular machine. Yeah, the guy thought it was an embroidery machine, it was a regular machine. Hey, would, would you ever get this? It, it's, no, I don't think so. I don't think so, at this stage of the game. It would cost a tremendous amount of money. Oh. <laughs> See, something's, something's up with that. I think it's time for a service. It is time I'm, I'm for a service. I'm curious if you hit, hit over a million stitches. What do you think? <laughs> Probably. Okay, I'm just going to explain to the people why I do what I do here. When I make an opening, I think I've shown you people before. When I do the opening, which is, well, this one's about four or five inches. It's okay, just enough to get my hand in. I, I stitch off the fabric this way vertically to about quarter maybe half an inch down and then I come along because that way I have a stop I have a stop instead of a um, just a, a seam here which can get maybe with all of the um, pulling the fabric that can get a little bit raggedy or a bit stretched out this way I have a stop so what I'm going to so I have my two pieces of fabric sewn together with my opening at the top. And all you're going to do now is you're going to put your art, put your hand in, go all the way to the bottom and pull your fabric out. And we're just going to go over to the ironing board and we're going to iron these seams. This is what I was saying about the opening. You're pulling a lot of fabric through this opening and it can get a bit stressed. So, so sort of push it as well as pulling it gently. So I have ironed my 56 inch piece really well. I've rolled the seams out, the side seams, so it's pressed beautifully. I just wanted to show you that this was the area that I was showing you, at the very top here, you can see that, where I have a stop. When I went to iron it, this seam, these, this area here just folded under beautifully. You can't really even tell that there's an opening there. That's where I pulled everything out, inside out. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to top stitch, starting at one end, I'm going to top stitch about a quarter of an inch around the entire uh, piece here. And as you see, I'm coming to this area, it's just closing up beautifully. fabric here that I've sewn right sides together and then I've turned them inside out right sides out and I have top stitched along the end and I have 
uh, closed up that opening right there. So it's in front of me with the pretty side up. What we're going to do, you might need a larger table or it's okay if you have just this table this size. What we're going to do is we're going to be taking the top right hand corner and we're going to bring it down to the edge along here, okay? And that makes a point, let me see if I'm in the frame right there. there at that end, okay? So we've taken that and just done a triangle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be bringing up, see if I'm in the frame here, we're going to be bringing up the bottom left hand corner to the top of over here. And again, you're going to be having a point there. And this edge is nice and square. So what we end up with is sort of two triangles and a center square. Now if you can imagine this square on the diagonal from this point here, this triangle point here, right down to this point here, okay? If there was a, if there was a line there, what we're going to do is we're just going to be picking up Keep seeing if I'm in the frame here. We're just going to be picking up this side here and we're going to be folding it from the point to the point on that diagonal triangle, on that square. You can just hold, fold it up there to there like so. Hopefully you can see what I've done there, okay? I'll do it again. We have, we have this triangle and that triangle with a square. I'm eyeballing from that diagonal to that diagonal. Actually, if you wanted to put like a, um, a yardstick or a ruler in there, you could, but I can just sort of um, jiggery pokery that, just feel that to there and then just pick this up all nice and straight on my table. And then I can just feel that. I'm bringing this point over to this point here. Making sure my triangle, my point's there, and my point is over here. And all of these, this edge is nice and straight there, and that edge is nice and straight there. Now what you're going to do is I'm just going to switch, turn this over like this. I'm going to just work on the one side right now, right here. I'm going to take my pins, and I'm going to lift up this flap here, and I'm going to lift up this one here. Okay, I'm just going to pull them to this point here. I'm just going to pull them up without bothering the bottom piece. I'm just going to pull this up here, pull this up here, making sure everything is straight along here, down to this point, pull it up, and I'm going to pin that from this point, the center point, which is the center of our tote, all the way down to this point here. We already have that finished seam there. Okay, there's no raw edges. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pin that one, and then I'm just gonna turn this over, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Now you might have to just juggle it a little bit, like that. Pull that there. Make sure that this edge is nice and square. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna be picking up this side here, and this edge making sure we have our point, making sure that's nice and square. We're starting in the middle here, starting at this point, and we're just going to pin that. I bought my little tote over and I'm going to be stitching these seams and I'm going to be stitching them from the center out to the point. I'm going to be stitching them from the center to the point. And I'm going to be back stitching this part here quite a lot because that's where the opening is and that's where it's going to be a little bit of stress on that opening. find the other seam and do the exact same thing. So 
So here we have off the sewing machine our two seams sewn, okay? Sort of put in front of us. So with one of the seams put in front of us and all, everything is smoothed down, we're working on the wrong side of our fabric, we're going to be boxing the corners. Now this isn't really necessary, but I like to to make the, the bag bigger on the bottom. So what we're going to be doing is I have a, um, you're gonna be, I have a four inch ruler here, a four and a half inch ruler right there. So you can use any measuring what you want because you're going to be going up four inches on this side and you're going to be going over four inches on that side and I just have a sharpie here it's okay it's, it's not going to be seen but there's my four inches this is a four and a half inch ruler I'm just going to make a tiny little mark there and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to find my four inch on the bottom here and then I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm going to find that mark here to that mark there and I'm just going to lightly if you had a bit of chalk I'm just going to lightly mark that like that okay if you can't see that, I can. But what I am going to do now is I'm going to be pinning this together. Even though it's nice and flat, I want to make sure that when I sew on that line, I'm going to be sewing right on that line from that point to that point. Okay, I'm going to be sewing right on that line. I'm going to be doing that to both corners. So I have really, as you can see, reinforced that stitching from that point down. I've done it a couple of times. This is going to be our boxed corners. I've done that twice on our corners here. Okay, so there's my thing. Now this is where in the very beginning I had said that there are no raw seams. Well, there will be one raw seam, but it won't be fraying if, as I was saying in the, the very first video, if you have a pair of pinking shears. Now, this we, this seam right here, this piece right here, the bottom triangle, we're going to be cutting off, okay? Now, I'm using my pinking shears and uh, about, about a quarter inch, maybe half an inch away from that line. Um, and I will be assured with the pinking, with the pinked edge, that this seam is not going to be fraying here. The bottom is not going to fray. If you wanted to, you could put a bit of bias binding on there or if you have a zigzag feature on your sewing machine you could by all means zigzag that but I'm just using or if you don't even have it don't worry about it <laughs> just I'm just going to be using my pinking shears and I'm just going to be cutting off it's strong there I'm just going to be cutting that bit off and as you can see that makes a lovely pinked edge I'm going to do that on both sides and again, if, don't, if you don't have it, don't sweat it, just cut it off. I mean, it'll be okay. It'll be inside of the bag anyway. And everything else is all finished off. So we're just cutting off those two corners. And then we're going to turn the bag right side out. This now is I am going to go over. Here's my boxed corners of my bag. If you can see that, like that. And then what will be our handles. So I'm going to go and over and press the seam. And as you can see, it's a very, it's a fairly heavy seam. So you want to, and we've reinforced it. So it's nice and nice and heavy there. It's awesome. So you want to press that seam. And then also you want to press this seam to make it really nice. Now at this point, if you would want to put in at this point here, a, where the, where the, uh, the um, things match here, you could put a piece of Velcro. You could just sew on a piece of Velcro there, like that to there. Or you could put a snap or a, um, a, a like a magnetic catch. I don't feel, I don't like to do that because I just, I, I, I feel like when I'm going places um, or a diaper bag or something for towels or whatever it's for, for market, I don't need that necessarily closed right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to iron these seams really well and then we just finish up by putting the handle on it. So I've put my bag to the side and I've had my four inch by seven inch piece of fabric for my little scrunchie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, I'm going to turn the pretty side in on each end, pretty side in about a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to stitch that
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise, like that, matching up those edges. And I'm just going to stitch down those two raw seams there. is I'm going to take a safety pin. I do have what's called a loop turner, but most of you probably won't. And I'm just going to put, we need to turn this inside out. I'm just going to put my safety pin in there and then just push that through to the other end. There's the other end of the safety pin and just gently tug that through. So you're pulling it right side out. And here is our little, is our little scrunchie with two finished edges. Now I'm going to just sort of finger press this so that the seam. So now what we have middle. here is our bag, the middle, the handles, and our little uh, handle. Okay, with using that uh, safety pin, I have a larger safety pin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, for me, it doesn't matter really, you, you can grab either one, but I'm going to grab the left hand uh, handle here, just bring it down, and I'm just going to sort of put a, my safety pin in the corner, okay, where that point comes, okay? Then I'm going to take my scrunchie, and I'm just going to threadle that through, just like we turned it inside out. I'm just going to find the safety pin, and squeezing that handle together, that fabric, just pull your scrunchie down out of the way, all the way, doesn't matter, doesn't matter where it is, it's out of the way, okay? You got that? That scrunchie is out of the way, because what we're going to be working with now is we're going to be working with this point here, okay? We're going to be working with that point there. Now, we want that out of the way. I'm going to bring this point here, I'm going to grab this point here, Okay, we have two of the points of our handles there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on, on my mat here. So we have this area here and here. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be turning this handle here. Okay, and I'm going to be turning this to there. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, there you go, I'm going to turn them and overlap these handles about an inch and a half, okay? About an inch and a half. I'm going to overlap those handles. You got that? There's our two points. I'm going to turn them and I'm going to overlap them. There's a little square. If you can imagine a little inch and a half square, something like that, okay? You can feel the one underneath, all right? And I'm going to pin that in a nice square, make sure it's lovely and square. Then I'm going. So as you can see, I, I'm at my machine and I have my square. I've bought it over from my table and it's a little bit, a little bit awkward at this point because that's why you really have to pin it very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything the whole time is pinned together nice and square. I will take out that pin there. Now I can feel when I put my needle down that I'm on that fabric underneath here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go very slowly because we're going through quite a lot of fabric here. I'm going to sew this square. I'm going to take, move that. Now I'm going to do this several times and it doesn't matter really about your stitching. I mean, you want to make it nice and square, but the scrunchie is going to come, if you remember, and just going to cover this bit up. So you just have to sort of maneuver it, make sure you don't have any of the other fabric underneath and everything is lovely and square. Just go slowly at this point. I can feel that I'm, I'm leaving my needle down and I can feel that I'm stitching that square, as you can see there. And I'm going to do this just a couple of times because again, this is our handle our strap, and we want it nice and sturdy. Okay. 
So hopefully you can see that on the even on the inside, it's quite lovely. I've made a nice little tidy X there and my handle, my strap is not going anywhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scrunchie bit and I'm going to pull that along and I'm going to put it sort of in the middle. You know, you, there's the middle right there. There's the middle and I'm just going to pull that to cover that bit there and just scrunch it up. The edges are nice and turned under. Just scrunch it up and there is our little bag. <laughs> There's my handle of my little bag. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's so sweet. So there, folks, is my finished tote bag. It's lovely and large. As you can see, the larger boxed corners really do make this wide enough. As I say, I have towels, um, toys if you wanted to, take, to go to Grandma's house with toys, overnight, uh, overnight pajama bag, um, going to the gym, stuff can be fit in there again I just use this as, as an open bag but by all means if you wanted to put a little tie there or a little clasp or anything um, it looks like you could put a, even a, like a yoga mat in there if you're going to the gym it's just a nice little not 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 little a nice big practical yeah, bag I hope he loves it really all right folks thank you so very much for following along on this extremely long tutorial <laughs> but we got there in the end all right see ya bye bye